In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning, St. Andrews. Good morning. It is a joy for me to be with you this morning. I thank uh, Mother Barbara for this invitation to be present with you. And my understanding is she will soon be flying home and will be with you all next Sunday. And I think returns Tuesday night or Wednesday morning. And I know it will be a joy for you to welcome her back from her pilgrimage. But it's also a joy to be here because I know how hard you work to glorify God in this place. I bring you greetings from all the diocesan staff, including Audrey, our bishop, who send their love to you. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, it is so good you're here today. We prayed in our calling about the perfectness of joy. We discover a bit of that with St. Francis and our gospel lesson. Today is a day on which we give thanks for all God's creation, everything in it, and a day that we recall what brings us to our knees to realize that God calls us to unbounded grace. <clears throat> According to the 11th chapter of St. Matthew, Jesus, after teaching his disciples the true meaning of discipleship, and after speaking about God and using words about God that no one had ever heard before, Jesus stopped, stopped the teaching to go into the cities to teach and proclaim a message of love and hospitality. Now, St. Matthew writes that John, while locked away in prison at the time, wondered, Jesus, who are you really? You go to places that do not practice God's love. You go to places where people don't even know God or understand God. You go to places where there is a lack of hospitality and love. Well, Jesus went into the surrounding cities. He walked the neighborhoods to pray and to speak words about God's love to everyone he met. He entered the villages there. He saw and heard things that really, really upset him. The people could not understand what he was saying. They could not grasp that living, loving presence of God's grace. He reproached them. And then we enter the gospel lesson for today. He let them know that the younger ones, those without power, those without influence, understood his message, God's message, more than the political and religious authorities of the time. Jesus claimed his identity. He looks out over the crowds and he lets them know that it is God. God, his Father, who sent them. And also, that whatever God gives to him, he is giving to the people. And he extends that to everyone he meets. Especially to those who are weary, those who are carrying heavy burdens. He just says to them, come to me. Learn from me. Rest will be given. In so many ways, the story of St. Francis brings this gospel lesson to life. Because to reach that perfectness of joy, it's an engagement of the depth of love that God gives to everyone. I remember a St. Francis Day several years ago, and I was supplying at St. Mark's Lewistown. It was an exceptionally warm day, we had a pet blessing at that time, and I know probably some of you are missing the pets not being here, and others of you are saying, oh, I'm glad the pets aren't here. <laughs> and we had a pet blessing out on the lawn at the east side of the church. At about 11 o'clock, I was preparing to go back into the church building because I had blessed um, three dogs, a gerbil, a cat, and a couple of other things that were in cages including one bird, which was amazing. That was the first bird I had ever blessed. But anyway, I had 
going back into the church when I saw a woman running up the sidewalk with four dogs. Four dogs. She slowly made her way up at the sidewalk, a little bit out of breath, and she turned to me and said, I almost didn't come today. I live about 20 minutes away, and it's a long way for me to drive. But she said, this is my family. These are all rescued dogs. And then she explained by patting each one on the head and giving them their name, one was blind, one had been thrown out uh, on Route 322 and had barely survived and had kind of a crippled arm and paw. And then she went on to say, these dogs are all I have left in life, that we have each other. I lost my husband this past year. I lost my home this past year. But these dogs, these are my family. And I'm so grateful for that. And she said, would you please give them a blessing? For she said, they are a blessing to me. We learn about God from so many sources, don't we? We learn from our relationships. We learn from our animal buddies. We learn, according to St. Francis, from the forest and the plains and the fields and all of God's creation from sunrise to sunset. And today we remember, and please remember all your animals and your pet buddies, those past and those present, because we know how much animals do bless us. In fact, we're blessed by all of God's creation. Now, I know here at St. Andrews we're collecting uh, pet food today to take to uh, those who need pet food. And I understand, and he is going to announce this, that uh, tomorrow's evening's meal, we're going to take some of that because many of the people that come to the community meal need pet food for their animals. We'll also be sending some uh, cards home for you today so that you can say prayers for your pets. You can say prayers for your pets. It's a great mission focus for today in this celebration of St. Francis. But how about we share a little bit more about the story of St. Francis. It has great relevance to our gospel this morning. St. Francis grew up wealthy. The early part of his life, he struggled with his family. He struggled with his identity. He went off to war. He was protecting Assisi. He was jailed, and he had to wait to jail until his father bailed him out. And he did. His father bailed him out. But once he came home, like many people of his time, Francis was kind of creeped out about people with difference. The lame, the blind, those who were homeless, those with leprosy. Now if you remember, leprosy was considered to be a very unclean disease at that time. And often the people who had leprosy, they lived in the shadows of the community. Just like the people who were blind, they thought to have sinned. And that was the reason that they were struck down with an infirmity. St. Francis was very uncomfortable at that time. He was very uncomfortable with people of difference. It's a normal human fear, isn't it? It's a fear which can be devastating to those who are shunned, those who are excluded, those who are not part of a community. So there is a great story about St. Francis and how God's grace, how God's grace enfolded upon him and changed him for the rest of his life. One day, it's told, while he was riding through the countryside, he saw a man walking alongside the road. The man had leprosy, sores all over him. St. Francis stopped and looked at him. And somehow in that moment, God's love broke into Francis's heart. He got off his horse, he looked the man in the eye, he opened his arms, and he gave him a hug. He touched him without fear and met him only with love. A man that was untouchable, hidden, not cared for, and not only receives love, but he gave love to Francis. He gave love to Francis. I believe this moment, 
that totally changed St. Francis's life, and as you know his story, and keep reading about his story, his whole perspective of life and God changed. I think that captures our gospel lesson for today. Listen to the language of our lesson from the interpretation by Eugene Peterson. The same lesson we just heard from our gospel. Are you tired? Worn out? Burn out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me. And you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Jesus said, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Unforced rhythms of grace. Unforced rhythm, rhythms of grace surrounded Francis and changed his life. And just think, he was bound in a culture that would never, ever touch a leper. He was bound in a culture where people of difference were absolutely excluded. But God whispered God's unforced rhythms of grace into Francis's heart. And his eyes opened up, and he saw what needed to be done. His arms opened, and love was given, and love was received. It was not a command. It was not an obedience. It was not even doing unto others. It was not a dogmatic statement of faith or belief. But it took faith. It took faith in the promise that God is love. Faith in the fact that all of us are children of God and we are beloved. Faith in the fact that to walk in the way of love means that we accept the unforced rhythms of grace. Francis didn't do good deeds. He was not trying to be a good disciple of Christ. He knew the scripture, but he met the living God. This was a conversion of his heart. During my vacation this past summer, I began reading a book called Becoming Human by Jean Vernet. Vernet found La Arche which describes itself, it's actually a place, an organization of homes, programs, and support net networks for people who have intellectual challenges, disabilities, and people who quite frankly think differently, but aren't perceived to be the norm. The place where one of my favorite theologians, Henry Nouwen, spent the end of his life to learn from those most, most often rejected. It was there that he discovered deep meaning of love. Seeing the divine in everyone as they saw the divine in him. He lived in the unforced rhythms of grace. Vinay writes, when I talk about inclusion of people with differences, I'm not just saying we should be kind to such people, nor normalize them into be like us. But no, they have a gift to give everyone, to each of us as individuals, and to society in general. The excluded live in certain values we need to discover. This is very difficult because fear, anxiety, and our continuous quest for normalization can stop us from relating to and knowing what we consider the other, a person of difference or a person of disagreement. It's not just a question of performing good deeds for those who are excluded, but of being open and vulnerable to receiving the gift of life that they can offer. The gospel truth in this narrative is that when we do most don't fit in, where we discover our shortcomings, our disabilities, we are agents of unbounded grace. That is the good news for today. When we think differently and feel differently and are among people of difference, we all become open to new ways of life and those unbounded rhythms of grace. For example, think about about two weeks ago when Greta Thunberg 
who thinks differently. And not only does she love God's created order in a way that St. Francis, I can imagine, did, the life of the environment, but she moved in a different way through the world as we heard her UN speech. It disrupted the accepted norms, didn't it? But while she was actually trying to do is awaken us to the unbounded, unfathomable rhythms of grace in creation. Awaken us to the interconnectedness of life. As St. Francis knew, the tiniest flower, the largest whale, brother, son, sister, moon, it's all a part of God's love and poetry. That, dear ones, is the incarnation. It's seeing Christ and God and all. And another who is different, difficult, are actually gifts to be shared, even if and when we do not agree with them. Imagine for a moment if one of our spiritual practices for this week was to learn more about and deepen the unforced rhythms of grace in our lives. So we see that in every one we meet. That is the perfectedness of joy. I always like to bring stories as I travel. I supply a lot in the diocese. We have a free shortage in the diocese, but it's just a joy. I feel like I come back home here. But I like to bring stories. Last March, we had an amazing experience with our middle school youth retreat. It was held at Camp Mount Luther, and it was an amazing time of prayer, singing, learning, and fellowship. Our work was to walk in the way of love together. There was a great leadership team and a new musician leading our music. His name was Brad. And Brad, surprising to us, brought his son, whose name was Mark. Now, it's an interesting thing to note that when our youth, we had about 22 middle school youth, and we have senior high youth, and we have adult youth leaders, all come together, we have this rhythm of singing, prayer, a little bit of study, some reflection, more singing, more prayer, and then hiking out in the woods. It's really fun. Well, it seems that Brad brought Mark along because Mark had no other place to be for the three days that we were going to be together. Mark was 14 years old, and his dad had a lot of concern for him because he was on the autism spectrum. At first, Mark just hung back from everyone. Even though the young people welcomed them, he just didn't quite know where he belonged or where he fit. So as we were doing some small group work, and Mark was listening, most of the time he was drawing. But every now and then, he would say something about God. People, the young people would respond to him, the adults would talk, try to respond to him, but he just kind of withdrew more and more. Suddenly, by Sunday morning, so we met Friday, Saturday, by Sunday morning, as it came time for us to celebrate Eucharist and gather around the altar, and everyone likes to hold hands around the, around the altar, two of our youth left an open space, left an open space. And Mark was still standing off by the side, and I will never forget this, and neither will any of the youth leaders, but we, we had prayers, we did our gospel lesson, we had a sermon and some reflection time, but when it came time for the celebration of the Eucharist, suddenly, as we got closer to the Sanctus, we saw Mark coming closer to the circle. As we began singing the Sanctus, Mark actually reached over, grabbed the hand on his right and the hand on his left, and he began singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. As we ended the Sanctus, he dropped his hands and he went outside the circle. The young people left the space, but he didn't come back in. As we looked at his father, Brad, he had tears in his eyes. And afterward, we learned that Mark had never sung before in public. And not only had he never sung before in public, he would never 
have felt the unbounded, amazing, unfathomable love and grace that he experienced at that moment. That moment was a turn in Mark's life. It was a turn in Brad's life. It was a turn for all the youth that had gathered. And to this day, the youth leaders I met yesterday with them, they're still talking about it. That is the gift of grace. Grace surrounded us all that Sunday morning. Tears of love, tears of joy, unforced rhythms of grace. Now, each of us, I know, carries such a story within us. Each of us carries such a story of remembering perhaps we couldn't reach out to a person of difference. But you know, if you let that unbounded, unforced rhythms of grace just kind of wash over you this day, especially as we go forward, that gospel lesson will take hold of us. Jesus taught the disciples St. Matthew shared it with its developing community, that God looks at all of us and responds. It is you that he is saying, take my yoke upon you, and I will give you rest. It is you that he is saying, you are loved, never alone. God longs for you to know that we are all loved beyond measure. No exception. And with that love, fear disappears. Difference doesn't hurt or be shunned, or even need to hide. Instead, difference brings new life. So as we go forth this day, and as you walk to that altar, to share and know those places of amazing grace, where are you tired? Where are you worn out? Where are you burn out? Come to the table. Share your places of pain and struggles with Christ. Sing your songs as if you're being paid, for there is rest. And it is together that we discover and live into the unforced rhythms of grace that will change all of us forever. Amen.